I'm standing about eight minutes from the beehive and about five minutes from a really good cappuccino and yet I'm standing almost within 250 hectares, that's around 250 football fields of native rainforest. This forest is just bursting with life. How does that happen? Come with me and we'll find out. Take my hand and I'll lead you back to the other side. Neil, what's the Koori Wildlife Sanctuary all about? Well, the Koori Wildlife Sanctuary is basically a mainland island and uh, we're, we've got a 225 hectare block of uh, valley enclosed by this predator-proof fence. Uh, the fence is 8.6 kilometres long. Uh, the fence is really there to keep things out, not to keep them in. What are we doing up here on the back of a truck? We're doing our regular fence check. Rain, hail or shine? Uh, rain and hail. Our fence is key to our biosecurity, so we have to do regular checks on the fence and regular maintenance. In winter we go around once a fortnight, in summer we go around once a week. However, uh, we have teams of volunteers who go around on a roster basis and check blocks of the fence and they report any any damage or problems. 8.6 kilometres of fence might not sound like much, but when you've got a fence like this that is designed to keep out every baddie imaginable, you've got to remember that a tree or a branch that falls on here could provide a ladder to a possum or a stoat that might want to get over. So this job, despite the weather, is a really, really important one. And give it another one. Done? Yep, another one. give it another one until it breaks off. There you go. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> Ian is one of the 400 active volunteers who work at Karori Sanctuary in Wellington for nothing and in fact Ian has been here since the very beginning so he has seen this place change I imagine quite a bit in the last 10 years. Quite dramatically with the, the growth of the vegetation with the eradication of opossums and rats. As you see it now, you can see all the understory. Well, that was virtually non-existent when it started. And what about the bird life? There were a few tuis here, but other than that, it was uh, pretty quiet. Now, they brought 11 kaka in here a few years ago, and just like that, now there are over 70. This is a hee hee and a bellbird feeder. We have this as a supplementary feeder. Although there's enough natural food for them, it's important to have the feeders here, certainly um, at nesting and breeding time, to make sure that they're in peak of condition for breeding. But also um, to keep the birds here and around in the areas that, where people can easily see them. In fact, hee hee, up until very recently, they were only found on one or two offshore islands. And Karori Sanctuary in Wellington was the first time that they've been brought back on the mainland and we've seen a couple already uh, this morning which has just been wonderful. When this sanctuary first was proposed more than 10 years ago, some of the locals, not Ian, uh, complained. They weren't sure about having it there. Some of those very same locals now hold Kiwi listening dinner parties on their back decks, which to me just shows how brilliantly a place like this can change not just the environment but our attitudes as well. Take my hand and I'll lead you back to the other side. Get yourself into a better place and live your life.